Hello and welcome to another video about the API Gateway. In this video, we'll explain in more details the request flow of the API Gateway, and I will show you how to authorize requests coming into the API Gateway. So let's first break down again the basics uh, elements of the API Gateway. We have the request flow, the integration step, and the response flow. The most important element is the integration. This is actually what the client is trying to do. Is it outside the API gateway itself? And the is where the API gateway will route your request once once it passes the authorization and validation. The integration step can be like a Lambda function that processes a, a payload, an event, or it could be an HTTP endpoint which is forwarded the request. The two other main elements in the API Gateway are the request flow and the response flow. The request flow contains everything before the HTTP request hits the, the backing integration, so everything before the um, integration here, and is concerned with validating and preparing the uh, request for your integration step. The, resp the response flow contains everything after the HTTP request his your integration and deals with preparing the response to the client. So when an HTTP request comes into the API gateway, it will go through these three elements. First, it will go through the request flow to authorize, validate, and transform the request. And this is actually what I'm going to explain today. Then second, it will go to the integration where the request will be handled by a service, which could be Lambda function or another service on the AWS or an HTTP proxy. And finally, it will go through the response flow to transform and prepare the response for your uh, client. This is all part of the API gateway. The first step of the request flow is the authorization. The authorization is divided into two different elements, the authorizer and the API key. But first, let's discuss why you may want to add your authorization in this step. Um, first of all, it consolidates your authentication logic to a single place. So every time you have like uh, issues or you want to check why there is a, there was a problem with the authorization, you know there is only in this step of your application. Second one, it protects your downstream, so your integration step from unauthorized requests, saving you uh, money and also load on these resources. And also the, the last reason could be that it can be this type can be cached, so reducing the number of hits on your authentication service. Um, within this authorization step, there are two checks that apply: the authorization here and the API key check. There are three methods of um, configuring the custom authorizer. The first one is using IAM permissions via signed HTTP requests. Second one is using tokens from a Cognito user pool. And uh, third one is custom logic with Lambda custom authorizer. Usually for like um, for a user facing API, the latter two options are the most commonly used. Uh, the Cognito user pool is like a nice clean integration if you already use a, a user pool in Cognito. And you need to you won't need to add any uh, custom logic as you simply configure your scopes when you create the endpoint. Uh, if you're not using Cognito, using like an um, external authorization service, as could be half zero, for example, or you want to have like uh, a more fine-grained uh, authoriz authorization step, you can use a, a Lambda function. With uh, a custom Lambda function, you can run any logic you want inside the Lambda function and get back the response to the API gateway. Um, so let me show this uh, different configuration on the AWS console. I have created an API gateway endpoint called my API. And if you go on the authorizer, you can create new authorizer name, my authorizer. And as you can see, uh, the first choice is you want to use a Lambda function or Cognito user pool. In this case, let's use Lambda function. And here you will have the list of Lambda function available for your service as a custom authorizer, even it will be all of them based on the region. Here you can decide to set uh, a role, otherwise uh, API Gateway will, is gonna um, uh, create it for you. And the next step is 
if you want to uh, forward the um, full payload to the Lambda function or just a custom header. So in this case it's token, with, if you want to specify a custom header, otherwise you can decide to forward the full request. And here you can validate the header of the full request. Let's do like token and let's call it like custom token. Uh, token validation, if you want to validate uh, the uh, custom token content, like if you if you wanted to use like a regular expression or something like that. Uh, then you, if you want, you can authorize caching and TTL as well. You hit create and it's going to create the role. Okay. And then you have your um, custom authorizer. This step can be fully automated if you use like um, infrastructure as a service uh, code. Uh, as it could build the service framework. Okay, now that we have configured our authorizer, what is going to happen is that when a client makes a request to the API gateway, if a policy doesn't exist for this client already, um, as is identified by the client authentication token in the request, then the API gateway will invoke this custom authorizer function. In this case, is uh, this Lambda function. And the Lambda function will return based on the uh, authorization, a JSON payload with a policy object for the user, or it could uh, reject the request and the API gateway will, will uh, mm, respond to the client with a 403 uh, error. For successfully authenticate the request, the policy will be uh, then cached for future uh, requests. So API, API gateway will then uh, forward the request to your integration service and then response back to the client. Once your request has been authorized, the next step is to use the API key. The API key are used to create usage plans. Uh, usage plans can be used to uh, rate limit your API calls and to set quotas for your customers. So let's make an example. Let's say you have uh, a plan on your product which allows like trial customers to uh, send maximum one request per second with uh, a burst of uh, up to five requests per second, but with a total of 10 requests per day, which is gonna reset at midnight. Um, and this can be like the trial account for your customers. You can do all of that using API key. So all your um, all your trial customers will use this trial API key. And we have these uh, quotas built in thanks to the API gateway. So let's go ahead and try out this um, this this feature in the AWS console. Okay, so let's create the usage plans and API keys from the AWS console. I am on my API gateway, my API. I first go on the API keys and create a new one. So create API key. I'm gonna call it Enrico API key. Auto generate. I'm gonna click save and show the API key here. I'm going to copy the value because I'm going to need it um, later. Then I'm going to um, add a usage plan. Let's do like a rec oh, No, sorry. First, I have to create the usage plan. Otherwise, it's not possible to add it. So let me go back to the API gateway. That's my API. OK, I click usage plan, create. And here I'm going to create like a uh, trial, for example. Trial plan for my. Trial plan. Okay. I'm going to enable throttling and rate. I'm going to do one request per second with a burst of five requests per second. And I want to enable a quota for just for the sake of example of like uh, 10 requests per day. Click next. And now I'm going to add my uh, API stage. So my API stage is going to be the dev stage. Here you can also add uh, the method uh, throttling because you can configure the uh, usage plans based on the methods. And I'm going to leave it uh, blank. So it's going to it's going to be used by all the methods. In this case, I only have one method, so it's not a problem. And next step is to add the API key to the usage plan, the one that we have just created. So I'm going to click Add API Key and Rico API Key. Click here. OK, and done. OK, 
now I have um, added the API key to my uh, trial plan. If I now go back to the um, API, I want to get the URL and the URL is here. Okay, this is the URL I need to copy. So let's copy the URL. I'm gonna now use Postman to simulate the API request. So I'm gonna copy the URL. Uh, next step, I have to add the header for the API key. So it's gonna be X API key. And here I'm gonna copy the value of the API key. Okay, and now I'm gonna start the um, usage. So it's working, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, if I go on the uh, usage plan, I can see the actual use of the API key. So if I go on API keys here, you can see Enrico API key usage. And well, I think it takes some time to update, but let's say we are at our fifth request. At our 11, we should, we should get the throttling message. Eight, nine, 10, 11. And as you can see, limit exceeded. So here the API key reached the limit and the API gateway is gonna get back to us with a limit exceeded error. And with a 429, too many requests, HTTP code. So we have seen how to create API key and usage plans with the AWS console, but I want to show you how easy it is to do the same thing with the serverless framework. So I created like a very basic, a very basic service with serverless framework with the uh, builder. And I, uh, I cleaned the uh, serverless YAM file. And if you want to add the usage plans for on your functions, the only thing you have to do is to add the API gateway um, option here and set uh, an array of API keys. Remember that the uh, my key is just the name of the API key, it's not the value. The value of the API key will uh, come up when you deploy uh, the service using serverless deploy from the terminal. And then you can set your usage plan. So quota, limit, 5,000, uh, period, month, uh, throttle, burst rate limit everything that we've done through the AWS console is also uh, configurable from the serverless framework and then the last step is to set the function that you want to use with the uh, with the API keys to private so you want to set you want to add uh, a value here a property here on the function called private true so now if I'm gonna eat the serverless deploy we will see the usage plan and also the API key value. Let's deploy the service. Okay, the two things to note. As you can see, I fixed the service YAML file. The private has to be on the uh, HTTP um, block. So you have to, uh, based on the path, you set the private true if you want to use the API key on this uh, resource then the API gateway is not on the root, it's uh, under the provider global settings. So API gateway has to stay with one indentation with respect to the provider. And the last thing to note is, as, a, as I told you, the, um, the service framework has created the API key and the value of the API key is here on the uh, logs when you deploy the uh, service. You can decide to remove it from the logs. Yeah, there's like an option, I think it's called, uh, actually it's, in, it's on the documentation, it's conceal, yeah. If you want to, to remove the from the from the output, your API key value, you use the option on the serverless um, deploy. So we have seen how the request flow is break down with the custom authorizer and the API key steps, and how you can use these two uh, elements on your uh, API flow. I hope this video was useful. Let me know if you have any questions on the comments and stay tuned with other videos.